Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So today we saw the release of the opening statement that prosecutor Aaron Zelensky, one of the prosecutors in the Roger Stone case, will be giving tomorrow when he testifies before the House Judiciary Committee about corrupt, abusive pressure and politicization of the Department of Justice under Bill Barr, specifically corrupt pressure that was brought to bear on the Roger Stone trial team, pressure designed to coerce, force, insist that the trial team mislead the court in sentencing and go easy on Roger Stone to do a favor for the president's friend, for the president's criminal associate, for the president's crony. I'm gonna to try to keep my blood pressure down because as a former career prosecutor, indeed retiring out of the DC US Attorney's Office where the Roger Stone trial team was based, this is as ugly as any perversion of the criminal justice system that I've seen in my 30 years as a prosecutor. Let's talk a little bit about the backstory. So the Bob Mueller team indicted Roger Stone, but when Bob Mueller delivered his report, the Bob Mueller team disbanded and some of the prosecutions were handed off to various U.S. attorney's offices. As we know, the Roger Stone prosecution and the Mike Flynn prosecution went to the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and that's where they were prosecuted. The Roger Stone trial team in particular consisted of four prosecutors, two of whom I had worked with at the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office. All four were honest, ethical, hardworking, fair, even-handed, appropriately aggressive prosecutors, the kind of people that we want representing us in criminal cases in court. Uh, I watched most of the trial. I was in the courtroom. They did a wonderful job. Roger Stone was convicted on all counts by the jury. And then as sentencing approached, things got ugly, things got abusive, things got corrupt, things got political, courtesy of Bill Barr and a lackey that he had installed at the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office named Tim Shea. Let me read a couple of passages from Aaron Zelensky's opening statement that he will deliver tomorrow. So AUSA Zelensky, among other things, says, I have never seen political influence play any role in prosecutorial decision making, with one exception, United States versus Roger Stone. And can I interject, folks, in my 30 years as a prosecutor, including as chief of homicide at the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, supervising 30 homicide prosecutors and responsible for overseeing all murder prosecutions in our nation's capital, I never saw political influence in a single case. The same is true of Prosecutor Zelensky, with one exception, Roger Stone. Prosecutor Zelensky continues, what I saw was the Department of Justice exerting significant pressure on the line prosecutors in the case to obscure the correct sentencing guidelines calculation to which Roger Stone was subject and to water down and in to some cases outright distort the events that transpired in his trial and the criminal conduct that gave rise to his convictions. Roger Stone was being treated differently from any other defendant because of his relationship to the president. U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Timothy Shea, was receiving heavy pressure from the highest levels of the Department of Justice to cut Stone a break, and that the U.S. Attorney's sentencing instructions were to us, to the line prosecutors, were based on political considerations. Prosecutor Zelensky continues, our team, the prosecutors in the Stone case, were being pressured by the leadership of the U.S. 
Attorney's Office, Tim Shea, not to seek all of the guideline enhancements that applied to Stone, that is, to provide an inaccurate guidelines calculation that would result in a lower sentencing range. We were told by a supervisor that the U.S. attorney had political reasons for his instructions, which our supervisor agreed was unethical and wrong. However, we were instructed that we should go along with the U.S. attorney's instructions because this case was not the hill worth dying on and that we could lose our jobs if we don't toe the line. Four line prosecutors, four career prosecutors were told by the U.S. Attorney's Office leadership, Tim Shea, and undoubtedly his boss, Bill Barr, that if they don't toe the line, if they don't engage in this misleading of the court to try to reduce Roger Stone's sentence because he's a friend of the president's, they could lose their jobs, do the wrong thing or get fired. They refused. And in fact, all four of them promptly resigned from the case. One resigned from the federal government altogether. Finally, Prosecutor Zelensky says, among other things, the Department of Justice treated Roger Stone differently and more leniently in ways that are virtually, if not entirely, unprecedented. After those four prosecutors were threatened that if they don't do the wrong thing, they could be fired, they walked off the case. They refused used to be part of it. But Tim Shea, Bill Barr's lackey, he signed that misleading memo the next day and filed it with the court. Now, as prosecutors, folks, we are duty bound to um, treat all defendants equally in the eyes of the law. Equal protection under the law. And what have we seen? What will we hear in testimony tomorrow before Congress? That Bill Barr and Tim Shea tried to do a favor for Donald Trump's criminal associate, Roger Stone. Cut him some slack, misled the court with respect to what the appropriate sentencing guidelines were and threatened that prosecutors would lose their job if they didn't go along with this corrupt scheme. What this does, ladies and gentlemen, is it serves as a gut punch to every defendant in the criminal justice system who is not wealthy, who is not influential, who is not connected, who is not a rich white friend of Donald Trump's. If you're a defendant and you're not well connected and you're not wealthy and you're not influential, you don't have friends in high places, you don't have Bill Barr and Tim Shea willing to corruptly bend the rules for you, well, you're not getting any favors. And I don't care if you're a defendant who's being investigated, pending trial, pending sentencing, serving a sentence, on probation, on parole. If this goes unaddressed, it will be a slap in the face of every defendant who has a right to the equal protection under the law. And Congress needs to take off the gloves. Because if they excuse this, if they don't hold Bill Barr and Tim Shea accountable for this corruption, this abuse, this politicization of the criminal justice system, then Congress is spitting in the face of every criminal defendant who's not rich, influential, connected, white, wealthy. And we can't have it. We can't have it. 
take off the gloves, hold Bill Barr accountable, hold Tim Shea accountable. This is immoral, unethical, it's wrong, it's corrupt. And after a full and fair investigation, it may turn out that it is also criminal as an obstruction of justice by interfering in the full fair prosecution of Roger Stone. Yeah, this angers me as a former career prosecutor who was duty bound to make sure everyone enjoyed due process and the equal protection of the law. Time to hold these men accountable. Stay safe, folks, and I look forward to talking with you tomorrow after Aaron Zelensky's testimony to Congress. Thank you.